LR3 is much more susceptible to causing hypoglycemia. So this happens with GH and insulin. You just need to, again, have a adequate amount of carbs on hand, carry around a bag of candy. What is up everyone, it's Roos. I hope everyone is doing well. Today's ASMR sip is 1907. Check out 1907.com. Coupon code Russo ASMR spritz. See if I can get one out. Young LA coupon code Russo. Check out my full source list in the pinned comment down below. Welcome to Peducation. Today, I'm not doing an androgen. I'm doing a peptide, that being IGF. Now, I'm going to lump IGF DES and IGF LR3 in the same category. They're the same compound, just different half lifes. So let's go right off the bat. Des lasts about 20, 25 minutes post injection. So this is a localized growth factor of like, my biceps are really small, boom. Shove IGF Des in this bicep, go train, boom. Wait 20 minutes, go back in the bathroom, shove IGF in this bicep, go train. Then you have a very harm mitigated way of using IGF to get local growth factors. LR3 is like, Fuck safety, 20 hour half-life, and the half-life again is pretty daunting because even like GH is like a couple hours, right? LR3 is around the clock cancer risk, and it's also, guess what happens when you eat? The blood goes into your intestines. What's in the blood? All the IGF-1 LR3 you injected. So it can definitely grow the waste and you have to be very careful with timing and dosing it, but I am referencing the Anabolics 11th edition. So this was developed in 1992, primarily for laboratory application. So this was really never meant to be a human consumption drug. I feel like they were just breaking it down like they're taking gh and they're separating all the chains creating new peptides and this is the one that they wanted to isolate because people inject gh to get the higher igf1 level now obviously gh has a bunch of other things that again i'm not like super well versed and would have to read up before presenting that video on but igf is the ultimate downstream conversion that happens that raises on your blood work that associates with muscle fullness hyperplasia the bubbly muscle look and overall decrease in life expectancy because of the cell replication. This is one of those compounds you got to be extremely careful with. I'll have Andrew throw up the video from two pros where the one guy died of cancer from IGF because he's probably doing a vial a day every day on end. And if he had any cancer growing in him, you're just throwing gasoline on that fire. IGF is a peptide that is 83 amino acids, and it's normally in a one mig vial that you reconstitute with bacteriostatic water, and then you put in the refrigerator. Remember, if you're going to utilize IGF, which is, again, kind of a sketchy compound, the minute you put the backwater in it, it's gonna go bad within, like, my opinion, like 10 days, even if you're refrigerating it. It's losing potency every day as it's breaking down, so keep that in mind mind that if you commit to a vial you pretty much got to use it pretty quickly otherwise you just wasted a hundred dollars the most notable side effect with any gh pathway is hypoglycemia so your blood sugar crashing this is very possible with igf lr3 less possible in my opinion with igf des igf des is like the fucking training wheels are on it's safe you can have some sort of local bring up a lagging body part if you inject it locally because it only has an I mean, it flows a little bit everywhere, but it's gonna stick around and wherever you inject it. So you could sight enhance stuff while you're training in the gym. LR3 is much more susceptible to causing hypoglycemia. So this happens with GH and insulin. You just need to, again, have a adequate amount of carbs on hand, carry around a bag of candy. You don't want to be, you know, shaking and feeling like your blood sugar is going to crash and pass out. So I had hypoglycemia on IGF LR3 and I've also had hypoglycemia with MK677. So it's not just GH that causes that. And you have to take that into consideration, especially if you're working out super hard that you're depleting your sugar and you might have to replace it. That's why you see all the juiced up dudes normally have a bag of candy on them just in case something goes wrong they can boom throw out that horrid side effect 
So I'm gonna read off the Anabolics book of the side effects they have. <clears throat> Joint pain, breath of tonsils, snoring, headache, dizziness, convulsions, vomiting, ear pain, hearing loss, hypertrophy of the thymus gland, and stimulate growth of internal organs. I already touched on that every time you eat, boom, where does that go? All these are horrendous side effects. IGF is one of the most powerful, most dangerous muscle building compounds there is that is just touted around. LR3 is no joke. So the injections that are listed on here is 20 to 80 micrograms is commonly used. And then they are very much harping that you consume a meal after. That's my research out of the anabolics book as well as the history what do i think i've used igflr3 about uh, like four or five times and each time i use it for one to two weeks get off it one to two weeks get off it those one to two weeks going crazy really trying not to engorge myself with food try and not keep blood sticking around around my waist because i don't want my organs to grow any more than they're going to grow but i don't want them to be overstimulated because i'm eating like a fucking pig on igf which again if we look at some of these bubblegut bodybuilders we we, we kind of see what's going on here right so that's what i noticed as far as what i noticed in the gym the muscle fullness is actually fucking wild um i'll have andrew throw up the trend igf one video in Washington. So yeah, that's some posing footage at over 250 pounds in the morning. I was creeping up to 265 on trend in IGF. LR3, I was in Spanway Fitness just yoked, right? The pumps were insane. If you were curled like a 20 pound dumbbell, the pump would get so vicious that it'd feel like you were curling a 40 pound dumbbell. That's why you see some super enhanced bodybuilders training light. It's because they're using GH pathway stuff with high IGF and it's very difficult to contract the muscles. The pumps are nasty i would not use this for strength training at all this is purely for hypertrophy and making the most out of fst7 you know bodybuilder style deep into failure high rep training with like pulsing reps trapping blood blood volume training igf1 lr3 really shines in these case scenarios on recompositioning your physique rapidly as well as replicating muscle cells at a more rapid pace remember the steroids the androgens grow the size of the cell the igf pathway specifically we're talking about igf lr3 but gh677 ip morellin any of these peptides are causing a raise in igf which is going to cause the muscle cells to replicate so you need the hyperplasia effect paired with the androgen to increase the size of the new cells boom that's how you accumulate tissue at a faster rate and this is what the pro bodybuilders are doing with again high amounts of really good growth hormone igf1 lr3 or it's rumored that some of them are getting incrolex which is like real igf1 which is stupid powerful and the cancer risk is even higher than igf lr3 i, I noticed that i want to train for strength on it pumps nasty overall hypoglycemia is definitely a possibility I had a couple of them but you know i just carry food in my bag it's no big deal and then i noticed that I feel full all day. I feel pumped all day, which at first is a cool feeling. Then you start to kind of get concerned, at least me. Maybe I just know like all the side effects I'm doing to myself and I just think differently. But yeah, you, you'll look like pumped up. If you would like carry groceries in from the grocery store, you would have like the nastiest pump after it's that strong. As far as like, if you want to play around, try IGF desk first. IGF desk is super safe. You know, it's argued that if you had unlimited money and pinning IGF-1 and you didn't care how many injections you did, if you did like multiple shots of IGF deaths all day and the body parts that were sore needed recovered, that'd be much less harm mitigating than again, creating this abnormally high IGF-1 score, which could grow cancer, organs, everything in between. And it's just better to have like IGF deaths, right? You just know the safety factors there. If you're gonna play with fire, if you're gonna play with the LR3, just know that you gotta get in and get out on it you got to get those results two weeks boom off it done and a lot of people run it for even less than two weeks you do not want to play around with being chronically addicted to this compound because it's a recipe for disaster and it's cutting years off your life anyways i hope you guys found this informative please give it a thumbs up so more people see my channel i will see you guys in my next video